time for the pressure rankings. For me, it was self-imposed pressure. Was I under pressure? No. Yeah, they're under pressure. Everyone's under pressure. OTB AM's pressure rankings with Gillette. And the big pressure. The Premier League manager's under pressure, Owen. Well, they say uh, pressure is a privilege, and uh, for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in at number five this morning, that's kind of what it is at the, more, uh, at the moment. Like, we spoke about this with Graham Hunter earlier on, about how Maurizio Pochettino getting taken out of the picture for a lot of these big managerial roles has surely given some element of comfort to managers who might have been on the hot seat at one point or another this season in the Premier League. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was definitely that guy a couple of months ago when he was struggling to get results for Manchester United. They'd been hammered 6-1 by Tottenham. They'd been knocked out of the Champions League. And you had Maurizio Pochettino doing a job on Monday Night Football and Sky Sports. He thought to yourself, this guy is under a fair degree of pressure. That pressure has changed now to actually mounting a title challenge and the expectancy that comes with that because the line had been out there all along that... When United were struggling, the player group there were not really to blame because they are so good. The question now is, is that player group so good that they shouldn't not be challenging for a Premier League title? And maybe you can make that argument, especially when you factor in Liverpool's injuries this season. So it's not pressure for his job at all. That's not why Solskjaer is on the list this morning. But Manchester United, you're in the title race. You have to be there at the moment. We're in January and you're right there, level on points with Liverpool. So... That is the sort of pressure that Solskjaer is feeling this morning, a sea change from two, three months ago. Is it real? Is this challenge real? Are you buying it? Yes. Really? I am buying it. I, I, I am buying it. Really? I, I, like I, I'm, I'm buying it in terms of a title challenge. Am I buying it in terms of a potential title win for Manchester United this year? No. But A title challenge dude, like, means with five or six weeks left to go, you still have a chance of winning the league. Like a realistic chance, I not a... Oh, we have, uh, you know, a game in hand and we're seven points back. And, oh, if Liverpool, you know, on a Tuesday, if uh, it's wet and... Uh, like, come on, real, real. A real chance of winning the league with five games left to go. The amazing thing about Manchester United here is that they still have room to grow. And their ceiling has uh, is much higher than everybody with the exception of Liverpool and Manchester City in the, the Premier League, clearly. And it doesn't seem that they're at that ceiling just yet. They've obviously got possibly the most informed player in the Premier League at the moment, possibly the best player in the Premier League at the moment, Bruno Fernandes. That's probably a, a conversation for another day. But it just seems that he has been putting the team on his back on so many occasions this season where you could, of course, skew that to if something happens to Bruno, Manchester United are screwed. But I'm going to say this morning that actually, if all the other parts of Solskjaer's jigsaw come together around Bruno in a fantastic way, they can go to a whole new level themselves. Can we see Liverpool dropping more points this season? Of course. Yeah. They've had they've had many many injuries, and the players who've come in to replace them are also injury prone. Like I I don't see how you can make a case here where they won't drop more points between now and the and the end of the season. And I think Manchester United are in a fantastic place to to swoop on in and make this potentially a tree horse race because we will move on to number four in our pressure rankings. And again, this this beautiful pressure that's on Pep Guardiola, but just a little more pressure on Pep because whether or not they win the Premier League this season, there will be the expectation to win the Champions League once again. And I know we did our 2021 Crystal Ball last week and I tipped Manchester City for the Champions League because it did seem over the last month that the pieces were starting to come together. And if they could just put the ball in the back of the net, they would be in a brilliant place. You would still have concerns about that. Kevin De Bruyne playing in a false nine role yesterday was excellent. But is that what you want? Is it like is that going to give you the same output as say a fully fit Sergio Aguero on his pump? Of course not. It's not going to bag you as many goals from that position. So they will still be reliant on goals from midfield. They will still probably find themselves in positions this season where they might not get over the line in games that they should easily be winning. And for me, that puts a lot of pressure on Pep Guardiola to ensure that they are playing so well that that doesn't happen when it really matters in the business end of this year's Champions League. Okay. I, I think that um, City are my favourites to win the league at the moment. And uh, in, Favourites? Yeah. In running yesterday when they went 3-0 up, they, they went um, favourites on the exchanges. All uh, right, who's next? Big Sam is next. So after that smash and grab one all draw at Anfield, West Brom went on to lose their next two games on an aggregate score of 9-0. So the pressure is on Sam Allardyce to do the two things he's supposed to do. So the first thing he's supposed to do is to shore things up at the back. There's enough pressure on that. Now the second thing, and this is what everybody said in relation to Big Sam being appointed as West Brom, is that Big Sam is his name 
big contacts book is how he actually plays the game in the transfer window. So how is he going to use that to make his big signings over the next few weeks? Well, he actually can't really complete as many signings as he would have wanted. So yesterday he said, I found three players already who are capable of coming here and they're not allowed. It's a shame. Due to the new regulations in terms of the permit, they were unable to come to this country, whereas previously they would have done. I have to look and think, can he qualify in relation to a player? That has made life a little more difficult. It's not so much the pandemic. It's the change of rules because of the Brexit deal. And that's a little bit unfortunate because, as we all know, on Jeremy Vine a couple of years ago and on Talk Sport and on all his media outings, Allardyce outed himself as a massive Brexiteer. On that Jeremy Vine appearance, he said, Hi, on my list is Brexit because I'm a Brexiteer from the very beginning and totally bereft by what the government has done over the past three years or more to do whatever they want for their own gains to stop it. So that is the unfortunate position that Sam Allardyce Aww. has found himself in. The Poor very Big thing Sam. He supported Poor Big is Sam. Is screwing him. Yeah. Poor Big Sam. So, like, I mean, there there is no chance that Big Sam, again, is under any real pressure with his job. But there is this, the fact that this has put himself into a bit of a, a nuisance situation in terms of his signings. He's going down, also the, right? He's going down. He's getting relegated. It's hard to see this not happen. Like, it's it's hard to see him pulling a... Like, if, he, if, if the transfer problems are real... Uh, as a result of Brexit, they've definitely been compounded by the pandemic, as we all know. Uh, you just can't see him going out to the market to find that goal scorer, for example, who's going to turn the season around. With that current squad, it's very hard to see him actually staying up. And like the, the pressure then is on, I guess, his style of play and parking the bus against teams that aren't necessarily Liverpool. Like You can give him a free pass for Liverpool, no question about it. It's just going to be interesting to see what happens outside of that. Like. Let's not forget the game before Liverpool. They got beaten 3-0 by Aston Villa. Now, they have had tough fixtures. And they have had, like, the, the other game outside of Arsenal and Villa they've had is, has been Leeds, who were in unbelievable form that night. So he has had tough fixtures to start off. And it will be interesting to see how the next month goes. But you can't make a case that he's not under a bit of pressure already. Yeah. And uh, look, you know, I, I wish him all the very best. I wish him all the very best. <laughs> uh, in number two in this morning's pressure rankings uh, is Mikel Arteta. This pressure has gone nowhere, Ger. Uh, the Chelsea are in such a rabble at the moment that they have become the launch pad for teams to potentially save their manager. And that might have been the case with Mikel Arteta and Chelsea. I saw Michael Cox making the point that Arteta has made a very simple tactical tweak, which is making their team symmetrical when it comes to their best players. Instead of having Bakayo Saka and Kieran Tierney on the left side of the pitch, one is on the left and one is on the right. Is that the thing that has potentially turned Arsenal around? You'd like to think that there's a little bit more to it than that, but it's definitely helped. And that is a decision that has been made by the manager and that can only give him confidence. And he already looks a little bit fresher. He already looks back to his good old handsome self, Mikel Arteta. But you can't tell me there's not pressure still on the guy. He now needs to go on a run of actually winning all these games in January because they don't really play uh, a traditional top six club until the very last day of January, I think it is, against Manchester United. If they win all those games up until Manchester United, the pressure will firmly be off Mikel Arteta. But let's not forget a couple of weeks ago we were saying a draw against Southampton was a good result. Now the pressure has changed to the point where Arsenal need to get back to beating these teams because they need to climb the table. I don't think they're going to win the Europa League. If they want to be back into Europe next season, they're going to have to finish much higher than they currently are. That is going to involve winning a hell of a lot of games. And for a period of time there, they were doing well to draw games. So let's not get carried away with a few results as the point here. The pressure is still very much on Mikel Arteta. Yeah, I, look, I, again, um, a good run, a bad run. Let's, Arteta hasn't suddenly become a good manager overnight, as the saying goes. What's, who's number one? Frank Lampard is number one, and we've uh, spoken about this already. The stats are rumbling out of uh, every website you look at now about how bad Frank Lampard's record has been as Chelsea manager. I mean, what was it? Andre Villas Boas even has a better record than him when it comes to points per game. Uh, Frank Lampard, right at the bottom of that table, you mentioned from the Athletic earlier on in terms of points per game as, uh, as an Abramovich manager. And it, the picture is just looking increasingly grim. There's the reports now that Chelsea are willing to sack him. Uh, just a, a lack of a clear identity of his successor is, is the question. Like you, you were making the point earlier on, why would they sack him now? And is there a similar situation here to Arsenal where if they put a run of wins together, they will actually rise, the, rise through the ranks in the table pretty quickly because it's such a compressed season? 
I think Chelsea definitely can. And I think if they have a top-class manager who can put a string of results together at the end of the season, they might still lie a Champions League place. Is that enough reason to sack your manager? Of course it is. So I would say he's in severe trouble, not just under pressure. I think he's in massive trouble over the next little while. All right. That is this week's Pressure Rankings. OTB AM's Pressure Rankings with Gillette. It's 845 this morning. A reminder, of course, that the best thing that you can do is to subscribe to the OTB AM podcast on the OTB Sports app. You can download that for free in the Play Store or the uh, Apple Store, App Store. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they have the apps these days. Uh, and, and you just click the button and it downloads. And, uh, you can hit subscribe and every morning we will uh, uh, send out the podcast on the RSS stream. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit technical here, but you know what it is. It's very straightforward.